The first tool I would like to talk to you about is the Brambleberry 5 pound loaf mold. And as the name says, it holds five pounds of soap or two and a half, about two and a half kilo. It comes with a silicone liner, beautiful, thick, sturdy liner. And it has this slide bottom here where you can get easily the soap out of the frame, if you want to call it that way. And it makes it very, very easy to unmold. It's something I would really recommend to every soap maker. I have a couple of those and I will get more in the future, that's for sure. And then it's also very easy to clean. Here is an example how you can get the soap out of the mold. It's so easy. The silicone liner, look how it unmolds. It's a dream. Doesn't stick, nothing. Just look at that. Just beautiful. Next mold I want to talk to you about is a mold that I'm using very often. Is this uh, rectangle mold, 12 bar individual cavity mold of Brambleberry. Very high quality silicone, very sturdy, very durable. I'm using it for a couple of different products that I'm making. This one here is an olive oil soap. You can see it unmolds so easy. The shape is fantastic. Absolutely love it. Next and last mold that I want to recommend as one of my favorites is this um, round 12 bar mold. Also from Brambleberry, it's the same material as the rectangle one we just saw and it's absolutely nice to work with, very high quality silicone, very sturdy. You can use it for cold process soap or as you can see here for melt and pour soap, works like a charm. One tool that I'm always using are these type of trays. You can use any tray and I place my mold on it and that way you can easily move your project around, be it soap or lotion bars or anything really that you are making. And then if you need your working surface, you can just move it and be ready for the next project. Or as you can see here. Moving on to the next tool that I absolutely love is this correcting tool. I think that's how it's called from Brambleberry. And it has two tools on each side. One is this one that I'm using if, like for example, you have some holes in your soap and you wanna fill them somehow. And then you have the other end here. I don't know how you call this, but what I am doing is I am smoothing the edges of the soap once they are about three weeks old, depending on the recipe. And then I just run it down the edge like so. And it gives a very nice finish. And fact is you don't waste so much soap. I know some people love to use potato peelers or soap shavers, but for me, this method here works the best. So I absolutely love it. Here you can also see the waste is very little. So I would recommend this one as well. Okay, so the next tool is a little bit evident. You might say, yeah, everybody knows that. Spatulas are really good for soap making. They are really good and I have a bunch of those, especially the ones that are just in one piece. So you don't have the risk of losing the end of your spatula inside a soap when you're making soap that could be really like tricky. And spatulas are fantastic whenever you want to really scrape out everything out of a pitcher, like as I'm doing here, preparing for a piping. I want to have all this thick soap out of the pitcher or just in the normal soap making. You have less waste and that means also less cleaning. And then even if you have like soap of thick trays, 
or a little bit like this salt recipe here and you want to really smooth it inside the cavities then a spatula comes in really really handy because it does the job I think this is so satisfying the water I'm just gonna keep it for a couple of more seconds here Okay, and then you want to also use it for other things like body water here or hand cream, whatever you are making. Spatulas are always a very good thing to have. And then of course, if you have many spatulas, then you might want to have a look at this tool here. This is a silicone tool, it's a spatula holder. It's actually a kitchen tool. But um, if you are making soap and you, especially if you're using different colors for one soap, then you want to have one spatula for each color. And then, you know, you have this problem of where do you put your spatula, you're inside the soap making. And then, of course, you have maybe a kitchen roll, but then the spatula sticks to the kitchen roll. So this is really a fun and very practical tool. You know, once you're done with the... A particular spatula that you need you just put it there on the spatula holder and you move on to your next spatula so that's really something nice to have the next tool that I would like to share is these piping bags here they come of Amazon and I absolutely love them it's a plastic disposable bag but it's not like the usual plastic this one is really sturdy and it holds about one kilo of soap and even if the soap is thick and you really have to squeeze, it won't break. So that's really, really good. I mean, of course, there are also these uh, piping bags that you can wash again and so forth. I'm not talking about these ones now. I'm just talking if you are somebody that likes to use the disposable ones, then I would absolutely recommend these ones here. The company is called We Bake and they can be found on Amazon. And here you can see just a little example of how they work. Like there's a lot of soap in there. And for me, they have always worked very nicely. Here's another example. You know, there's an interesting thing because Soap is actually heavier than cream that you would use as a baker. And um, you, you need really a sturdy bag to keep this weight. Here you can see clearly how full the bag is and how much it holds. And I think it's just very nice also to watch. Talking about nice to watch, here comes this handmade wooden soap loaf cutter that comes with guitar strings that you don't need to tune and then it has this removable bottom here so you can easily clean and then you can choose the width of your soap how wide you want to have it and then this gentleman here from Germany he will make it according to your wishes and this is a tool that never had any issues with it you can see here an example how it is in use. It just cuts the soap very clean. You have a smooth finish, very nice. It even cuts through soaps if you have embeds on top or inside of it. I never had any difficulty with it. And I will leave a link down in the description box below where you can order this. I mean, I'm in Europe here, but I'm sure you have some options in the US as well. If you are in Europe, then this is something you might want to consider. Next tool I would like to talk to you about is this shaver, soap shaver from Brambleberry. It is a wooden tool that uh, comes with a knife inside. And then you have the possibility of choose between two kind of um, shaving options, if depending how much you want to shave off from your soap. 
And then let's say you have a, a soap that has soda ash on one surface or even a soap that is not so smooth. Then by running it through this tool here, you can get the soap really smooth or you can get rid of the soda ash. So that's really a good thing to have. Next tool that I would like to recommend to you is this impulse sealer. It comes from Amazon and it works like this that you pull down the handle and then it starts heating up inside and then once the lamp switches off then you know that is enough heated up that it sealed your bag that you sandwiched inside of this machine. So let's see what I mean here because it's a little bit difficult to explain. So here you have a melt and pour soap for example, and then you sandwich it with this handle here and then tuck, you see your bag is sealed and then it's ready for shrink wrapping or you, if you prefer to leave it like that, that's okay too. So here you can see this one is cold process soap. The one before was melt and pour, so it works very fine for both. And of course you can use it for any product that you want to seal in. Next little tool here is actually a milk frother or a coffee frother and it has a battery. I know some of them come also with a rechargeable cable. So this is fantastic for mixing your pigments before you're using them. You can pre-mix them with oil with this little tool here. And this is how it works. You add your pigment in some oil and then you add this mixer and it will really disperse your colorant. Very, very clump free and smooth. So you will not find speckles in your soap. It's an inexpensive tool, very handy to have, recommended to everybody. Moving on to another tool that I absolutely love. This is a 12 liter container. If you wanna make a larger batch of soap and it comes with these handles here so you can move it around easily. And it has a scale here and then another one on the back for the liters. And it's just absolutely fantastic. I will leave a link down in the description box. Here you can see this is just two loaves that I'm making and you, it can hold a lot. You can probably make four times the batch that I'm making here with this container. It's absolutely stirred, it's a high quality, you can really feel it. Next tool is a very important one and probably every soap maker and cosmetic crafter has. It's an infrared thermometer. It's very easy to use, very clean. You don't need to have any contact with the thing. You want to find out how hot it is. You just point it on it and then you have the exact temperature, whether it's in Celsius or in Fahrenheit. Here you can switch over very easy. And if you are making wax melts, for example, you need to have the exact temperature when you want to pour. If you do lotions, you need to have exact temperatures. When you're making soap, you want to know that your oils and your lye water are at the same temperature before you combine them. So this is something that you cannot really miss. Next tool that I really find important investing in is a good stick blender. It doesn't need to be a fancy one, I just have two speeds here. This one comes from Bosch, it's called Ergomix. And then the stick does release so easily and so smoothly that it's really a pleasure to work with. I don't think that a stick blender needs to be really expensive. This one came for about 50 francs, it's about something like 50 dollars and it has always lasted. I've never had any issues with it. And whether it is to mix 
you apply a water solution in oils together to make an emulsion, as you can see here, or to mix your colorants. You can see it really works very nicely, whether you're using it for titanium dioxide, where mixing it with a stick blender is something you have to do in order to really blend it in really well. Then you have all the colors here. You know, it's so easy and fast. And then for this black one here. So it's also pleasing to watch, mainly here. And then also if you have some additives, like bentonite clay that I'm putting in here, also the stick blender really helps dispersing it into your oils. So this is something that I recommend, it's a must have for every soap maker. Try to find a stick blender that really works well for you and you're happy with. I'm also using it whenever I have a batter that I need for piping, if I want to have it fast then I just give it a mix with the stick blender so it gets faster to piping consistency. Next tool that I really find very practical are these pitchers here. They have this long funnel so you can really have a very exact pour whenever you are making like some special kind of techniques, gradient pouring or some kind of um, stripes that you want to have very exact. And these are fantastic. The plastic is very smooth, very easy to clean. It also has a little scale. And here I'm going to show you a little example of how you can precisely pour your soap into the mold. This one is a double boiler. I absolutely love it. I personally do not use a microwave. I've never used one, also not for food. But you of course can. And a double boiler has two walls. That's why it's a double boiler and then you pour water into it. So the water heats up in between the walls and then this is a very gentle heating method that is used also for chocolate melting and so forth. And I melt all the oils, the hard oils and the wax in it. And I absolutely love it. I think it's a great tool to have. So my last tool I would like to talk to you about is the dehumidifier. It means it's a tool that is taking out the humidity from the environment and you will be amazed of how much water it can collect in a small amount of time. You can see here you remove this drawer, there's the water inside, you can easily pour it out just like so and then you put it back in. This one is very silent, I think it's important to find one that is really silent. This one is called Pro Breeze, I got it from Amazon. And um, as you can see here, I just put it next to my soaps in my soap rack. And if you have soaps like me with glycerin embeds on top and you need to cure it so you cannot wrap the glycerin into plastic, then it's good to have a dehumidifier because it will help your glycerin soap that it doesn't sweat. Same thing applies for bath bombs. If you're making bath bombs, you absolutely want to have a dehumidifier. Also for shower tabs, a dry environment is really very important. Thank you so much for watching my video to the end. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Maybe you even found some of the tips helpful for you. I love to hear about it. I always love to hear your feedbacks your comments and so forth. Remember that soap making is supposed to be fun. It's a very creative activity. And if you have the right tools, it's even more fun. So I wish you a very nice day and see you very soon for another video. Bye-bye.